Now, this week, the commander of Ukraine's drone forces revealed that they possess a laser weapon that can shoot down airborne targets more than two kilometers away. According to experts, such a weapon could be effective against low-flying drones like the Iranian Shahed-136 that Russia uses in its war against Ukraine. And these drones, known as Geranya 2 in Russia, are made of relatively fragile components that are vulnerable to the heat created by lasers. Ukraine's claim has not been verified, but experts say it's feasible. A handful of countries are developing so-called directed energy weapons, but the technology is still at an experimental stage. So let's break this all down with Larry Friese, an aerospace engineer with Aerial Information Systems. It specializes in drone engineering services and consulting. He joins me today from Pensacola, Florida. Welcome. Just to start things off, could you talk us through uh, a little bit more about how laser weapons actually work. So the equivalent, it's a laser, just like you would say in all, a typical office laser, uh, po a pointing laser, a red or green laser. So it's just a concentration of photons, but if you concentrate them very greatly, they end up being quite destructive. Um, the difference between, say, a counter drone laser and a typical office laser is the these the counter drone lasers will operate either in the infrared or ultraviolet parts of the light spectrum. So, as humans, we don't we won't be able to see them. And why might laser weapons work then particularly well against drones? Well, this current generation of drones do not maneuver. They simply they fly in straight lines. They orbit. Um, they're, they're not like fighter aircraft. So it's generally, if you can see the drones, you can lock onto them and put the laser beam on them. Now with lasers, you actually have to, it's not like star Wars where, you know, we're used to seeing lasers pulse and blow up something with these types of lasers. They're a continuous beam where you have to focus the heat on a critical part of the aircraft for a given period of time until it fails, either by burning or melting. So in that sense, drones might be a somewhat easier target. What do you make of Ukraine's claims that it has a working directed energy weapon? Uh, <laughs> um, I, I'm of the opinion that they have definitely gotten some help from somebody, either the British or the, the United States, even possibly the Israelis. The number of Western countries who successfully fielded a tactical laser system for, for air defense, it's a very small club, and the United States has been at it for years now. So I'm really doubtful that the Ukrainians were able to, in, in their condition, being in a state of war, were able to leapfrog everyone else with a functional laser system. So without diving too much into the strategy and politics of it all, from, from a technical perspective, why is it so challenging for countries to develop these weapons? Well, the, there's the optics of the lasers, uh, literally just forming the laser beam, aiming it. And you're, we're talking about distances of you know two to 10 kilometers away from wherever the, the laser is actually located. So you have to be able to actually focus that laser beam into the size of possibly even a coin at 10 kilometers away in order for it to be effective. So that becomes a, and then you, there's a power generation aspect. Um, you know, nice thing about lasers is they have what we call a, almost a, a very deep magazine. So they will continue to fire until you run out of electrical energy. Um, so become producing electrical energy in the field becomes a could be quite an obstacle for, for for some operators. And so, with all those challenges, do you think that we will one day have laser weapons that could could even take down missiles and higher altitude airborne weapons? Absolutely. The U.S. has already invested quite a bit of money into shooting down ballistic missiles with lasers. Uh, those programs were terribly expensive. Um, but I believe that on a tactical level that we will definitely be seeing lasers in the field in the next few years. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to share your expertise with us. That is Larry Friese with Aerial Information Systems.